The Amityville Horror was a watershed event in the history of horror movies. Released in 1979 on a budget of $4.7 million, the Stuart Rosenberg-directed independent horror feature, based on supposedly true paranormal events, made over $80 million at the box office, while establishing the blueprint for haunted house movies that is still used today. Inevitably, a follow-up would be made, and that indeed came into fruition with Amityville 2 The Possession, a loose prequel to the events in the first Amityville movie that tells the story of how a satanic force destroyed a dysfunctional family mere days after moving into their home in Amityville, New York. A darker film compared to the first Amityville movie, Amityville 2 The Possession was originally made by director Damiano Damiani as a much more uncompromising, sinister, and taboo-breaking horror experience that outraged test audiences and movie studio executives alike, leading us to ask in this video, what the f happened? to Amityville 2 The Possession. I want to thank you guys for watching What the F*** Happened to This Horror Movie and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like this video and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now, back to the show. Amityville 2 The Possession tells the story of the Montelli family, an Italian-American family who move into the house of their dreams. Soon, a paranormal, satanic force takes a hold of the Montellis, enhancing the inherent dysfunction and abuse within the family to violent extremes. Especially afflicted is the eldest child, Sonny, Jack Magner, who becomes possessed by the demonic presence, leading to the savage destruction of the Montelli family and his soul. Like the Amityville horror before it, Amityville 2 The Possession is based on supposed true paranormal events. The focus this time was on the tragic crimes that befell the seven strong DeFeo family, who, in 1974, were murdered by eldest son Ronald DeFeo Jr. as they slept in their beds. DeFeo Jr. maintained that a demonic presence influenced his homicidal actions. These grisly crimes preceded the infamous haunting of the Lutz family, whose experiences was the basis of the Amityville Horror. The 1979 book, Murder in Amityville, written by famed Austrian-American parapsychologist Hans Holzer, introduced the idea that DeFeo Jr. was possessed by a demonic spirit while in the throes of his homicidal actions. Murder in Amityville was chosen by executive producer Dino De Laurentiis as the narrative basis for Amityville 2. This was a creative decision that was not well met by George Lutz, one of the occupants of the Amityville house. Lutz wanted the sequel to be based on John G. Jones's book, The Amityville Horror Part 2. The book recounts the aftermath of the Lutz family escaping the house, yet still experiencing paranormal events. When De Laurentiis and film studio American International Pictures opted for Holzer's book instead, Lutz sued. Although he was unsuccessful, Lutz did convince the makers of Amityville 2 to release a poster that stated the film is not a sequel to the Amityville horror. Brought on to direct Amityville 2 The Possession was Damiano Damiani, a filmmaker from Italy known for his work on the spaghetti western A Bullet in the General and the mafia TV show the Octopus. Amityville 2 was Damiani's first and last American film that he worked on, which is not a surprise considering the difficulties Damiani had in presenting his uncompromising, dark version of the American haunted house movie to the masses. Brought on to adapt Holzer's book was Tommy Lee Wallace, who at that time was known for his editing work on John Carpenter horror classics Halloween and the Fog. Wallace wanted to further explore the idea of an ancient Indian burial ground that, while cliche today, in the early 80s was a fresh horror plot device. In an interview with the movie Waffler, Wallace said, quote, my first draft was very reliant on Indian lore and the possession phenomenon, featuring a reporter character who visits DeFeo in prison. The whole story was told pretty much in flashback with the eventual chilling reveal that the Indian is still right there in the jail cell, still in possession of the DeFeo boy's body. De Laurentiis, however, was not impressed with Wallace's screenplay and ordered a rewrite with, as Wallace would state, a certain amount of Indian lore woven in, and a lot more emphasis on a priest character called in to do an exorcism. Wallace would also speak to the mindset that Damiani brought to the film, with the director's religious background of particular emphasis in this horror story that pits good versus evil. Quote, like so many Italian directors, Damiani seemed to have all kinds of issues with the Catholic Church. He added tons of dialogue pertaining to that, but left most of it on the cutting room floor. With Damiani on board as director and De Laurentiis happy with Wallace's new script, casting began on Amityville 2 The Possession, beginning with who will portray the Montelli family. Cast in the central role of Sonny was Jack Magner, with Amityville 2 The Possession his debut film role. She knows the way. Don't be smart, boy. You're not too big for a whipping. 
Magner would also have a small role in Firestarter a couple of years later before he retired from acting altogether to become a family man and later a school principal in Boston. In the equally pivotal role of Sonny's sister Patricia was Diane Franklin, who had previously starred in the teen sex comedy The Last American Virgin. For Franklin, playing the role of Patricia brought with it a new set of challenges that the young actress was ready to take on, stating in an interview with Shout Factory, quote, the fact that this role had more provocative script writing. I felt that I could handle it in a way that was more appropriate and with the respect it needed. Burt Young and Ratanya Alda were cast in the roles of Anthony and Dolores Montelli, the parents of the Montelli clan. Young, who is the biggest name in the Amityville 2 cast, thanks especially to his Oscar-nominated performance as Paulie in the Rocky films, took on a much darker role as an abusive father and husband whose violent tendencies were enhanced in the Amityville house. Said Franklin in an interview with Shout Factory, quote, And I wanted to work with Burt Young because I thought he was an amazing actor and I really respected his work and I thought uh, my whole thing as an actress was to keep working with better and better people because then, you know, obviously you learn more as an actress. Rounding out the Montelli family are real-life siblings Erica and Brent Katz, who portray youngsters Jan and Mark Montelli. In the role of Father Adamaski, the Catholic priest drawn to help the Montellis against the evil presence in their home, was Chicago character actor James Olson. Also playing a priest was Oscar-nominated actor Andrew Prine, who said in an interview with Shout Factory, quote, Damiani spoke no English and I spoke no Italian and it worked perfectly. We didn't have to talk to each other, we enjoyed dinner together and I'd say, hey, macaroni, you know, that was about it. Filming for Amityville 2 The Possession began on March 8, 1982, at the same Toms River, New Jersey house that was used in the first Amityville film. However, this time, studio shooting was done in New Mexico. Famed paranormal investigators and demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren, who made a name for themselves with the Amityville haunting, served as demonology advisors for the film, despite the heavy subject matter of the film, and that Damiani spoke little to no English and often had to use a translator to communicate with the cast and crew, the set of Amityville 2 was described as jovial and that everyone got on well. The only cast member who was distant was Magner, who often kept to himself, which is not a surprise considering he was playing the part of a demonically possessed homicidal killer. Said Alda in an interview with Voices from the Balcony, quote, working with Damiano, Dumiani, and the cast of Amityville 2 The Possession was a really positive experience. He was really smart, had strong points of view, and encouraged actors to share and synthesize their points of view with him. Damiani's point of view, however, proved to be too much for test audiences, with the Italian director's original cut of Amityville 2, one that was met with negative reaction, especially toward two key scenes. The first is when Anthony anally rapes Dolores. Throughout Amityville 2, it is said that Dolores is sexually repulsed by Anthony, who would react to Dolores' rejections to his sexual advances in violent rages that can be heard through their bedroom door. Whether during these moments of domestic violence is where the rape took place cannot be confirmed. Damiano wanted that in there, that Young not only really brutalizes his children, but he brutalizes his wife. I think mommy doesn't want to make love to daddy anymore. I think he tries to force her. Another scene that proved to be controversial is the incestuous sex scene between Sonny and Patricia. While the theatrical cut of Amityville 2 features the controversial scene where the demonically possessed Sonny seduces Patricia and ends with a kiss, the original scene is said to be much more graphic and sexual in nature. In a 2012 interview with Royal Flush, Franklin said of the incestuous sex scene, quote, I never had a brother, so luckily I didn't have that association or the weirdness that went along with it. What did make Franklin uncomfortable was the behavior of the producers, who tried to convince the then 20-year-old actress who did not have her parents or chaperone on the set to film the scene fully nude. Quote, They said I was beautiful, and they really wanted me to do it. I said thank you very much, but no. They got around it by shooting me from the back, which I had a say in, and that was that. Other deleted scenes include Anthony sitting outside, drinking and cleaning his gun, Jan pushing Mark's head under the water while he is in the bathtub, and Jan and Mark holding hands while outside the window. No actual footage of these scenes was released, yet there are several stills available online. When asked about why Amityville 2 took on a much darker tone compared to the original film, Alda said it was actually Damiano's vision of that script that made it how it was. I think something had to do, we talked about it, I think it had to do with his fact that he's a Roman Catholic from Italy. Okay. 
So I think a lot of it was the conflict of the good and the evil, mm -hmm. you know, good right. versus evil, the church right. versus the devil, right. God and the devil. Yeah, I always think of Amityville 2 as an adult horror film. Amityville 2 The Possession was released on the 24th of September, 1982, where it made $12.5 million on a $5 million budget. Although it hit at the box office, Amityville 2 was scolded by critics with Variety writing that there are actually two films meandering in this mess. One, a second-rate horror flick about a family in peril, and another that is a slight variation on the demon-possessed exorcist theme. The best review at the time came from the legendary Roger Ebert, who gave the film two out of four stars, writing that Amityville 2 is actually slightly better than the Amityville horror. However, that didn't stop Ebert from selecting the film as one of the worst of 1982. In recent years, Amityville 2 The Possession has taken on a cult following, with many proclaiming the second film in the always growing Amityville series as the best. Whether Damiano Damiani's cut of Amityville to the Possession will ever see the light of day is not known. What is for certain is that when it comes to uncompromising, taboo-breaking haunted house horror movies, not many compare to what the late Damiani delivered with his first and last American feature film. Gone has seized South Sidon. When you say a prayer and you put him in the ground, you speak a whiskey and it's marking bound. Ain't no new shit going down on the soap streets of Blue Island.